beauty. Oh, wow. I'm loud. Uh, I'm always loud. This is a common thing you'll find out when Tyler's at a thing, is that Tyler's voice is loud. Um, what was the difference with using ClickHouse? Things got faster. Love it. Uh, so I'm going to give a talk that's entitled Learning Databases and Learning Languages, or the other way around. I don't remember what I called it. Uh, I'm interested. How many of you in here have used ClickHouse before? Yeah, rad. That's amazing. Uh, how many of you join our monthly community and release calls? Alone, pleasure to see you. Zach, always. Thank you so much. It, it matters. So this talk is called Learning Languages and Learning Databases, or perhaps it's an entirely too personal story. So let me start with who I am. Uh, my name's Tyler. I look after developer relations at ClickHouse. You can find me on the socials, on Tyler Hannon, in all of the places, unless you're a Discord or a Reddit or a Hacker News user, in which case you'll find me as VicBang, uh, V-I-Q Bang, which probably tells you what editor that I tend to use. I want to spend a little bit of time before I share this talking about my personal history in databases. So 17-year-old Tyler, between his uh, junior and senior year of high school, had his school administrator call him and say, our admission system just crashed because the database doesn't work. And I was like, I can fix that because no one had ever told me that I couldn't. So I believed that I could out of this combination of, of hubris and stupidity. And I began my career by starting a consulting firm at 17 focused on Sybase SQL Anywhere. And then SQL Anywhere rolled into SQL Server, so I became a SQL Server DBA. And then SQL Server wasn't scaling into the retail clients I was working with, so I worked on DB2. Uh, I was the VP of product for Fauna. I, I ran marketing for Macrometa, which is an edge database. Uh, I ran technical content and marketing for Basho. I was at Elastic for a number of years. I've spent a bunch of time in Envy. So if you ever want to talk about like geospatial imaging and how like spectral and hyperspectral analysis differ, I am delighted to. And I built the data warehouse for Rational Software, which probably none of you know, but was the coolest thing ever. But understanding my background requires a little bit of understanding my physical history in the world. So I grew up in Colorado which is the giant empty square over what I presume is, yeah, that shoulder. And I moved about seven years ago to Amsterdam. And when we moved to Amsterdam, we were faced with this interesting challenge. It was only supposed to be a year, maybe two. And I have two girls, now 17 and 12 at the time. They were, they were 10 and five. And the question was, what school do we put them in? Do we put them in an English school? Or do we put them in a Dutch school? So we begin. But before we begin, do any of you in here speak Dutch? Awesome. So I'm only embarrassing myself a little bit rather than extensively. Uh, mama, a Calvin Cass. Mother, I love cheese, which is perhaps the most common child saying in the Netherlands. Mom, I love cheese. A country that's predominant export is, in fact, kaas. It's a simple statement, but simple statements can have large impacts. Earlier, we talked a little bit about ClickHouse versus ClickHouse Cloud. This is SQL Console in ClickHouse Cloud. It's one of the ways to interact with your data in that environment where we're running it on your behalf so you don't have to run it yourself. And this is just a simple select star from the system contributors table. And it shows a bunch of names. It's the equivalent of Mama, Calvin Cass, because fundamentally, when you're learning to speak a language, you're learning a series of nouns and verbs. And ClickHouse, for those of you who know it, for those of you who don't yet, you will in a moment, speaks SQL, which is also a combination of nouns and verbs. I want to select 
from, I want to insert into, I want to create, I want to alter, I want to kill, I want to exist. These are sort of fundamental human emotions that are expressed in the ANSI SQL standard. But that's only the start. So where do we go from there? We continue in our learning. Nu kommt the app out the mouth. Does anyone have a guess of what this might mean? Yeah, you shouldn't, because it makes no sense. Now comes the monkey out of the sleeve. What? Now comes the monkey out of the sleeve. It's an idiom. An idiom uh, in English is, is a phrase that when you take it as a whole, has a meaning that you wouldn't be able to deduce from the individual words. I'm under the weather. Great, so is everyone in Boston. It was shit this morning. New comp the op out the mouth. Now I have a monkey in my sleeve? I am surprised by a thing. Reality is showing itself. The magician is pulling a monkey out of their sleeve, which was evidently a thing in the 1600s. I don't quite understand why it would be a thing, but it's still perhaps the most common Dutch idiom. And when I was talking to my daughters about this presentation, I was like, hey, what should I use as an example? Should I use Reiche Pipenstele? It's raining pipe stems. And they were like, no, no one says that. And I was like, um, well, uh, what should I use? And their solution was, nu komt de uit de man. So understanding these idioms, gives us insight into the ideas that formed the database. This comes through this weird combination of experience and practice. I'm gonna continue with my example. Does anyone have any idea why the system.contributors table even exists? Here's why it exists. And this video is a video that Alexei gave uh, with GitHub talking about contribution. This is the system contributors table that he was showing. Pretend that Tyler has fallen upon hard times and Tyler needs a new job. And Tyler finds this really cool company, Clavio, and is like, hey, I want a job. And the engineering manager at Clavio says, well, what have you done? And I say, my name exists all over your network. Because if you select star from system contributors, you'll find Tyler Hannon. That's why system contributors exists. It's an idiomatic representation of the importance of contribution to ClickHouse. Those of you in this room who are building really freaking cool things on top of what we have done are what make ClickHouse compelling. A database in isolation is meaningless. A database with your data used in your environment, and there perhaps there's you know, a fantastic example is what we've just heard from Data Wheel and from Fastly, two fundamentally different approaches to very important use cases. So now I've started simply, and I've begun to learn idioms, but yet there's more. This is a message I got as I got on the plane yesterday from my eldest, who does indeed look like that. That's her, her daily. Somehow I raised a goth kid. It's just a thing. I'm okay with it. Uh, I was one. Perhaps genetics are indeed a thing. Yeah, ja, you Swiss, gewoon FF, normal dude. And I was like, Ella, what the hell are you talking about? And so she sent me the whole thing. Yeah, ja, you so so gewoon even normal dude. Okay, this is a Dutch idiom expanded and then contracted into a Dutch colloquialism. Do maar gewoon, dan do je al gek genoeg. Just act normal. It's already crazy enough. That perhaps is the most defining element of Dutch culture. Do normal. Be normal. Normal is crazy enough. So she took this concept she compressed it because that's the way that people text and that's the way evidently her generation interacts with each other into, yeah, you mut so so gewoon, even normal do. Yeah, just always do the normal thing. Like, yeah, great, I'm terrible at that, but 
thanks for the offer. So understanding idioms in context are important. Idioms are amazing, do normal. But language in context actually matters. Here's some context. I'm gonna pick on system contributors because it's one of my favorite things and I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, number six at the village is my local machine. So I just fired up a Docker instance against 2311 and I did a simple select from system contributors ordering by name and I piped it to a file, right? Simple enough. And what it does, this is just a head against that file is it gives me a list of all the names. Everyone who's in the 23.11 contributors table. And that's interesting, but what I care about is who is new. Which of you or those like you have chosen to contribute to ClickHouse in the last month-ish since we cut the last release? And so here's where I use this lovely little tool called ClickHouse Local. If you haven't played with ClickHouse, Start with ClickHouse Local. It's great. It's an ephemeral instance of ClickHouse. It runs on your machine. You can do fun stuff like open up. In this case, I'm running on a Mac, so dot slash ClickHouse Local. Uh, this was in my older folder, so it pulled up the 23.9 version. And I had two text files, the 23.11 contributors text and the 23.10 contributors text. And I just did a select. If you notice, it cleans up the terrible formatting that every database professor I ever worked with would have hated me for using when I put it all in one long line. But it's a select from these lines from the file, 2311, with the line as a string, where the line is not in the same select from 2310, and then formatting it as a TSV raw. And I get this. And there's some names here I recognize. Uh, I recognize Melvinator which to me means that Melvin, who is our product manager for ClickHouse, uh, contributed from the wrong GitHub account. And I was able to be like, hey, Melvin, I know you've contributed before. Which account was this? And he's like, yep, Git ignore is a thing. But this gives me the opportunity to play with data very quickly in a way that playing with data in Google Sheets is a pain in the neck. And it's small. It's a couple of thousand, it's 18, 1300, 13, almost 1400 contributors. It's manageable, but like, why am I gonna write Perl? Like, why should I play with Python? I could just use ClickHouse Local and do it. So as I thought about this talk, I thought about what are the things that define the way that I, as someone who talks about the work that other people do, rather than doing work myself, really, short of, you know, the effort of coordination of an event, and et cetera. There's a lot of work that goes into that. I shouldn't sell myself short. But I talk about the things other people build. So what are the things that I think about as I'm learning something new, be that a database or be that a language? Sound stupid. Mama, Calvin Cass is perhaps the stupidest thing for a 45-year-old bearded white dude who moved to the Netherlands to say. But it matters because now I'm able to communicate in a way that I wasn't before. Or when I shared this deck with my daughter, her recommendation was, don't sound stupid, be fearless. Because that's the superpower of the young. They're not afraid of the perception when they communicate or when they ask a question or when they play with new technology. And after you're fearless, begin to learn common phrases. I mean, I use system.contributors, but like, what about table engines? We talked about the graphite merge engine just a moment ago. There's a stack of table engines in, in ClickHouse. There's aggregating merge and something where I think there's 11 different merge types and then there's something like 12 or 13 different um, uh, integration table engines from S3 to Postgres to MySQL to ODBC, JDBC, et cetera. There is a whole lot of phrases and idioms that you have the opportunity to play with and then combine those idioms with colloquial phrases. Like, sis, do you even materialized view? Because you should. And once you start thinking about materialized view, what about projections? And by the way, have you seen the, 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 the RFC for materialized view refresh? Because that's actually really exciting and 
coming sooner than you might imagine. Fundamentally, learning databases, be it ClickHouse or Postgres, which is probably my favorite OLTP database, or MySQL or SQL Server or any other data storage solution that you may believe in comes down to one single concept. Have fun. Life is too short to make things painful and full of effort. I was going to say effortful, but that's a very Dutch way of saying that. So I had to like do the wacky parsing to English in my brain. Have fun. And if you haven't played with ClickHouse, the simplest way to start is just curl clickhouse.com, pipe it to a shell, and you'll get the release that's most appropriate for your version, whether that's Mac or Linux or a stack of others. And by the way, the download went from like 500 meg to I think 107 meg uh, in the last release. Alexei's goal, our CTO and, and the original author of ClickHouse, is to have it under 100 meg um, by the end of the year. I told him he's crazy. Uh, I've been wrong before, so I should probably believe in him. CurlClickHouse.com, pipe it to a shell, get a download, play with it. It could be something as simple as looking at the comparison of contributors across releases, or a subset of census data, or what's happening at the edge across the world and sort of managing graphite-based telemetry. But the place to start is just to start. That's 16 minutes. Thanks heaps. I won't belabor it much longer. Appreciate it.